Two giant asteroids are coming our way right now, speeding through space at 43,000 miles an hour, and one of them is about two and a half miles wide. It's believed to be the asteroid responsible for the first ever recorded meteorite crash that almost killed a woman 60 years ago. So to talk more about this, I'm being joined now by legal and media analyst uh, Lionel. Lionel, my friend, for this segment, though, I'm going to call you my meteor analyst. So, <laughs> all right. And the topics get meteor and meteor. <laughs> well, well, let's keep our space talk from last week going. Yes, yeah, yes. We, we seldom hear about these giant space rocks. How come and, and, and how dangerous might they actually be to us? Well, let's first of all look at the big picture here, the theme of this. From an eschatology point of view, the end of times. <laughs> Think about this. This, theoretically, the asteroid, meteors, this huge collision, is what gave humankind its chance, our chance. So I find that fascinating. Number two, I don't believe anything the government says about anything. <laughs> now, number three, look at what's interesting about this. Let's assume that all of a sudden, and we talked about this last week, if all of a sudden people started looking elsewhere, where governments had to cooperate with other governments, where one government had to lend a hand, where all of a mm -hmm. sudden these weird jurisdictional differences between us, this sense of nationalism, all gave way to this collective, we're all in this together, where kumbaya meets right. we are the world. This is a fascinating topic because what it does is it reminds us just how vulnerable we are, how we're just this little blue dot in the middle of nothing. That's true. That is a good point. And, and you know, as we discussed last week, uh, I think a lot of people aren't aware that there are these uh, joint coalitions um, that include countries like Chile and, and France and, and even some other NATO partners, but, you know, the U.S. is strangely left out. So I, I get why uh, you may not believe anything that our government is telling us, especially when it comes from, you know, regarding space stuff. Um, and what's also, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, what's go also ahead. Interesting, no, what's also interesting, too, is that, you know, we love to talk about space, but from a very infantile, uh, <laughs> a juvenescent point of view. I mean, here we are, you know, Star Wars, and that's terrific. But when it comes to really understanding how this thing works, I mean, just think about this. Something that is two miles wide, colliding at enormous speeds, and when you also consider this part, who is responsible for this? Think about the legal implications. Who has jurisdiction? How do you make a claim? I mean, I'm sure somewhere in your insurance <laughs> policy, you know, act, we, we always have acts of uh, nature, uh, force sure. majeure, acts of providence. I mean, the, these are the implications of this are so fascinating. But what's interesting is that the first thing the mainstream media says is, ah, oh, don't worry about it. There's no chance it's going to hit us. Well, that's good news. But just think about this. When it comes to our ability to understand our position in the world, especially when it comes to space, it's hard to believe that we know less than we do this particular topic because we have no idea of how this thing fits in. And let me also go back to the idea, especially every now and then we'll talk about evolution and creationism. Let sure. me just remind folks, this is how humankind came about. And many people have suggested that, believe it or not, I'm really going to blow a lot of people's minds, that maybe our genesis came from microbial uh, data, if you will, on these asteroids that hit us, you know, uh, millions, millions of years millions ago. Millions of years ago. Not to forget, so, so, though, not to forget, this is what took out the dinosaurs. So, but, but you know, according to NASA, the, the chances of being killed by some sort of meteorite or other things falling from space is actually uh, about one in 250,000. Now, that's actually better than any state lottery. I don't care where you're at. But <laughs> yes. they, they also say that we can expect to see more asteroids passing Earth as uh, in the coming years. They're just going to kind of scoot right by us. But should we actually be worried, though? How do you plan for this? We don't get worried about stuff. We don't care about diet, health, 
politics, war. We don't care about cancer. We, nothing bothers us. Nothing <laughs> frightens us. Nothing. We will trivialize it. We will laugh about it. But what's also interesting is that one of these days, you know, there's this part of me that thinks, Manila, that the governments are, are kind of acclimating us towards some big news. And as we said last week, one of these days, mark my words, and I hope to be on with you, when that contact is made, when you go to some anchor who looks ashen and pallid and says, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to believe this, but we have made contact. And it's not an asteroid, it's not a meteor, it's even bigger. I hope it you and I are definitely together. Oh. If, if and when that comes, you and me, Lionel, thank you so much for that. Thank you. That was legal and media analyst Lionel. Now, here's the asteroid story. An asteroid the size of the Rose Bowl, more than a thousand feet across, feels its way toward the Earth right now. It'll come by first in 2029 and we'll see it up there. It'll be closer than our satellites, a thing the size of the road bo Rose Bowl hurtling through the air. And then it comes again in 2036, and that's when it may get interesting. The debate over just how close it'll get is sparking some serious debate between Russian scientists and American scientists. Here's a satellite picture of the thing. This is from, well, with this, this and, you know, this tells you nothing. But see it there? I don't know, that circling thing in the middle, maybe? Uh, this was from 2004. It doesn't look very intimidating here. Both sides seem to agree that in three decades, the asteroid will fly very close to Earth. But Russian scientists warn that our planet's gravity could change the asteroid's path and set it on a collision course. NASA scientists say there is a minuscule, little bitty chance of that happening. One in 250,000. Better than winning the lotto, and somebody will. Well, joining us now, Michio Kaku. He's a theoretical, theoretical physics, physics professor at City University of New York, CUNY. He's also the author of Physics of the Future, and a new book coming out in about a month, and we'll tell you about that in about a month. So, tw good to see you. Mm -hmm. 2029, it flies by underneath the satellites. That's right. Mark it on your calendar. Friday the 13th, oh April God. 2036. The well, that's big the one. second pass. On the second pass, right. The first pass, like you said, it comes right underneath our satellites. You can actually see it whizzing right overhead. Wow. And on the second pass, it might actually be a nation buster. It'll take out Germany. It'll take out France, England. If not England, not England. <laughs> or the, the entire northeast of the United States. Careful. It'll hit with a force of 100,000 Hiroshima bombs. Really? If It'll, it hits? If it hits, right. It's a catastrophe beyond human comprehension. And the head of the Russian Space Agency has said that the Russian scientists should think of some ways of deflecting it or, or handling this deflecting menace it. in 2036. What, what, I mean, what, what are we going to do? Shoot it with a laser? Well, everyone thinks we'll send Bruce Willis out oh, there yeah, with the space shuttle. Idea. But the space shuttle can't even reach out of space. We're phasing it out, and the space shuttle only spins wheels around the planet Earth. It cannot even go to deep space. We need a new booster rocket to take us out there. Maybe China will build us one. Maybe, and then we have to nudge it out of the way. The farther it is, the easier it is to push it out with rockets so it'll, it'll miss the planet Earth. But it's something that we have to take seriously. This is the first major threat from a giant meteor or, or asteroid. Were it to hit us, do we know what it would do to our rotation around the sun and the, the spinning on the axis? Will well, it, it, will, it will definitely affect the rotation of the Earth as it goes around the sun. The immediate impact would be a gigantic shock wave going out maybe 50 to 100 miles, then firestorms going out to hundreds of miles beyond that. Firestorms. And then meteorites raining back down on the planet Earth. So the devastation would be on the order of uh, 500 to 1,000 miles. Think of a bullseye, a bullseye containing half the United States. That's the potential impact. And again, it's a very tiny probability, but we're watching it very carefully. Because the thinking among some of these Russian scientists is that the first time it passes, the gravitational pull of the Earth could pull it closer, and then on the second pass in 2036, the wild card is also the atmospheric disturbances. It's going to come right, right to the outskirts of our own atmosphere. Mm. Friction is going to take place, and that's unpredictable. We simply don't know how it's going to react as it whizzes through the atmosphere of the Earth, and that could affect the second pass, and that's why we're keeping our fingers crossed yeah. in 2036. Two sets of fingers crossed. But isn't the world ending in 2012? The Mayan calendar seems to indicate... Well, if you look at the Mayan calendar, it actually says that it's cyclical and mm. we could be witnessing a rebirth. Oh. We should be celebrating then. And personally, I'm gonna be, I, ho I hope to be around in 2013. 
So don't wow. sell the store. Don't get divorced. <laughs> don't don't ruin your life in, in 2012. All right. I'm sure some people will. News from the future. 2012 is going to be weird. It's great to see you. Mm -hmm. I'll see you in a month for that new book, right? Right. Physics of the future. About the next 50 to 100 years.